um, I'll be speaking on Jesus the Savior. Jesus the Savior. Who is a Savior? A Savior is someone who can save others from destruction. He is not walking on the path of destruction, so he can save others from that path. So to be a Savior, you must ensure that you are not walking on the path of destruction. Because if you are walking on that path, then you can't save others from that path because that is where you are walking. To be a Savior, you must have authority because it takes authority to speak and evil situations will obey. When a Savior speaks to a dying man, life will automatically be restored into that person. God gave us Jesus as a Savior to save us through his salvational works. He paid the price of sin through death and this qualifies him for the work of a Savior. Now there are two major tools that every Savior must have. Number one, salvational words and number two, salvational works. There must be something you are saying that can produce salvation in the heart of your hearers. That is salvational works. The, at the same time, there must also be something you are doing that can also enhance salvation. That is salvational works. So if you want to be a soul winner, you must understand the principle of salvational works, which involves what you say that can produce salvation in the heart of the hearer, and also salvational works. This involves what you do that others can see, and it will propel them to be saved. Jesus prayed for those he paid for. Jesus preached to the people. That is salvation and works. And he ended his service by dying on the cross. That is salvation and works. So his teachings were the works of salvation and his death on the cross was the work of salvation. Can you see the two principles coming, coming up here? So you also, if you want to be effective in the ministry of soul winning, you must have both the salvation and works and the salvation and works. Jesus also saves from violence. He won't stop at just making you a Christian. He will also take up the responsibility of, you know, of, you know, he, he will also take up the responsibility to see that you are divinely protected. Jesus did not end his work as a savior on the cross. He still does the work in our midst today. Healing the sick saves them from sickness. Can you see that? That is salvation. Healing the ones who are suffering from one disease or the other saves them from diseases. That is salvation. If God bless, you know, if God blesses you with money, then He has saved you from poverty and lack. That is salvation. Every work of Jesus leads to salvation because He is the saving Savior. A Savior is also a restorer. How God restores you is by sending Jesus the Savior to you. He saves us through the weapon of restoration. 1 Kings chapter 13 verse 5. You can't return to your original place without meeting Jesus the Savior. A meeting with him is enough to restore your position to you. You know, uh, a meeting with him will bring you into your original estate, your original position. A savior is also one who can do great things. Being able to do something is not enough. You should be able to do great things. If greatness cannot qualify what you do, then it is not great. Jesus the Savior saved us through his great work on the cross. The proof that Jesus, you know, the proof that Jesus' work on the cross is great is that no man can do what he has done. It takes a great work to set a record that cannot be easily broken. Psalm 106 verse 21. We are all saved and we can now be called the sons of God because of the works of Jesus. It will be impossible for us to do the work of God if the great work of salvation that Jesus did have not affected our lives. The effect of Jesus' work uh, is what transforms us into sons and not slaves. Please note that the effects of Jesus' work 
is what transforms us into sons and not slaves. A savior is also a deliverer. He can, you know, he cannot deliver if he is not the savior. He is not qualified to be called a deliverer if he is not the savior. A savior that cannot deliver is not a savior because how will you save people from sin without delivering them from sin? What we call salvation from sin is actually a deliverance from the powers of sin. That's why the Bible says, Sin shall no longer have dominion over you. He does great work because he is the great one. Please note that Jesus does great works because he is the great one. So it takes one that is great to do something that is great. If you are not great, you cannot do great things. So be before you desire to do great works, the first thing is to become great. It is who you are that defines what you do. So for you to do great works, you have to be great first. So Jesus does great work because he, he is the great one. Isaiah 19 verse 20. A true Lord must have the ability to save. To lord over those you have not saved is to reap from where you have not sown. Jesus lords over those he saves. If he cannot save you, then he can't lord over you. If he has not saved you, then he cannot be your lord. Jesus is a holy savior. You are truly saved when you carry the attribute of your savior. If the Holy Savior has saved you, then you have every right to be holy. Isaiah 43, verse 3. I hope you get that. The one that has saved us is holy. So we also are supposed to be holy. Because if it is the Holy Jesus that saved you, then you are supposed to carry the attribute of the one that has saved you. Every one that is saved must look like the one that has saved them. So if you claim to be saved by Jesus and you are not living a, a life that is holy, then you are lying because you are supposed to look like your Savior. Just in case the one that saved you is the holy Jesus, then you know that there is a need for you to live a holy life in order to look like the one that has saved you. The reason the Bible encourages us to be holy is because the Savior that saved us is holy. You are to look like the one that has saved you. Are you getting that? So, um, let me quickly say this again. I made a point the other time. I said there is what we call the works of salvation and there is what we call the works of, sal of, of, of salvation. There must be, you know, when we talk about works of salvation, we are talking about what you do that can propel, that can enhance salvation in the life of others. That is works of salvation. So every soul winner must have both the works of salvation and the word of salvation. Jesus had those two equipment. Let me show you. Now, each time Jesus teach the people, each time Jesus preach the people, what he's doing is the works of salvation. So in the works of salvation, you preach, you teach. Are you there? But the death of Jesus on the cross was the work of salvation. Are you there? So Jesus did something on the cross, and that thing he did produced salvation. There was also another thing they heard from him that also led to salvation. So if you want to be a soul winner, you need to work in those two dimensions. There must be something you are saying that can bring people into salvation and there must be something you are doing that can bring people into salvation. Jesus preached and teach the people to enhance salvation. And after that, he died on the cross. That's a work. So he did both the work and also releases the words. So we have words of salvation and we have work of salvation. The reason the Bible encourages us to be holy is because the Savior that saved us is holy. You are to look like the one that has saved you. It will interest you to know that there is only one Savior. Every other person that claims to be a Savior is only 
it's only deceiving you the only true savior is jesus any other person calling his or herself a savior apart from jesus is only trying to cage you and not to save you a true savior is not interested in show off he hides himself to prepare for his assignment those who have not learned how to hide themselves under the umbrella of god's instruction cannot know what it takes to save others after the death of jesus he handed over the responsibility of saving others to the church this is why every child of god must embrace soul winning through evangelism because that is how to save the lost the moment jesus died on the cross he handed over to the church the death of jesus on the cross was a kind of spiritual handing over program so by dying on the cross jesus handed over to the church what did he hand over to the church he handed over the responsibility of soul winning to the church you must understand that if you are part of the church then you are entitled to soul winning everyone that is saved must engage effectively in soul winning you can't save the lost without first reaching out to them you will need to go out in order to reach out this is why the bible says that he that wins his soul is wise this knowledge is what forms the wisdom you need to win a soul you are the new savior as ordained by jesus the power to save is not in you but you will save others by referring them to the great work of jesus the savior now we have been ordained as saviors by jesus not because we can save in ourselves but because we know how to refer people to jesus now this is the equation of salvation now refer the sinners to jesus refer the sinners to the great work of jesus now that great work of jesus will now be transferred into them now the moment the that the, the effect of that great work is transferred into them it will now produce in them a need for repentance which will lead to salvation can you see how, how simple it is so don't try to show sinners yourself don't tell them the name of your church necessarily tell them what jesus has done so when you refer them to the great work, to, to the great work of jesus on the cross and they shift their attention from you to that great work suddenly the effect of that work will, 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 will be transferred into their lives. And what that thing will do in them is to produce a need for repentance. So immediately they will begin to see how wrong they have been. Oh, how, 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 you know, how sinful they have been living. That's the effect of the great work. That's what the great work is doing in them. And what that will produce in them is a need for repentance. The moment they see that need for repentance, salvation becomes a reality. How to partner with the Savior is to reach out to the unsaved. So, you reach out to the unsaved by becoming effective in evangelism. If evangelism is not part of your plans, then God is not there. If evangelism is not part of your plans, then Jesus is not in your plans. If you are saved, you can preach. If you are saved, you can preach. You don't need, you know, you don't need any special anointing to do that. Salvation qualifies you to save others. Those who are saved must rise for the salvation of others. Don't be selfish with Jesus. Share the good news about him. Jesus is not your personal property, so you have to share him. Some people will say, okay, I, I'm not called into soul winning. No, every child of God is a soul winner. The primary assignment for every believer is, is to win a soul that one is not consequential it doesn't matter you know where you are the kind of ministry you have everyone have the ministry of soul winning you must understand that so even when you are a chorister you must sing with that consciousness that i will be singing to win a soul can you see that the the the, the at the end of every ministry whatever ministry the lord is giving you the, the focus of every ministry is to win souls. That's just the truth. If you're a pastor, you must have the consciousness that you are doing that to win a soul. If you are an apostle, you must have the consciousness that you are doing that to win a soul. 
The moment we don't have this consciousness, it will be hard for us to fulfill the heavenly mandate. So we'll be directing people to ourselves instead of directing them to Jesus. Some will say, where do I start from? Start from where you are. Where do I start from? Start from where you are. Those unsaved people in your family, start from them. Those people who are not saved around you, they are your first assignment. Start from them. You know, there is always someone somewhere close to you that is not saved. There is always someone somewhere close to you that is not consistent in his or her work with the Lord. Those are the people to start from. <laughs> salvation has two dimensions. There is salvation for the lost and there is also salvation for brethren. That's the truth. Are you there? For the lost, they are coming into Christ. For brethren, they will renew their mind. That's salvation. Continuous renewing of our mind is salvation. So when you hear salvation, don't just think of the lost. No. Brethren also needs it. It's just that the, 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 the dimension to these two categories of people is not the same. To the lost, salvation is coming to Jesus afresh. But, but to those who are part of the fold, salvation can be a renewing of the mind. Are you saying that? There is no special calling for soul winning. Every true child of God should be a soul winner. This is the wisdom of God. Don't settle.